previously on Benjamin Dude Guy. The heck was that? Oh well. Oh yeah. I was gonna talk about that game. I should probably do that. Hey there, boys and girls. Banjo here. I'm back, and I've redecorated. See? Even got a shelf with Christmas lights and everything. So that's pretty cool. A while ago, I hinted at a game that I was going to do a video on at the end of my Titan Souls review, and it went absolutely nowhere. Sorry. I guess I'll talk about it now. Verde Station is a game, obviously. It was made by an independent development team called Dual Boots, and by team, I mean just one guy named Soren Silkinson, whose last name sounds very smooth and soft to the touch. So that's nice. In Verde Station, you play as the only guy on a space station, or girl. You don't really have a physical body in the game, so I guess you can be whatever you want. Heck, you could even be a sentient grizzly bear if you like. I mean, why not? It is 2017 after all. So we begin our game and are immediately woken up by an alarm clock, or as I like to call them, the bane of my existence. We then hit the shut up button on the worst invention ever created, survey our surroundings, and approach a monitor mounted on the wall where we get to put in our name. I went with Banjo Man Dude Guy, but you can name yourself whatever you feel like. Maybe your name's Jerry, so you can use that. Or don't. I don't really care. The game then asks us a series of questions to set up our profile. These questions are so the game can subtly mess with you while you're playing it. Kind of like when I was younger, I used to sneak into my sister's room while she was sleeping and move her doll collection around a tiny bit each night, so she thought they were alive. She doesn't like dolls anymore. The questions aren't really all that straightforward either. For example, picture a horse in your mind. What color is it? Brown, black, white, or multicolored? What shape do you prefer? Circle, square, or triangle? And, my personal favorite, a massive storm is quickly approaching. You would go to your storm cellar, run to your car, or raise both arms to the heavens, daring the gods of men to smite you knowing the only possible outcome! Now that we've wasted precious moments of our incredibly short life, we are free to run about the station and touch everything like a curious toddler. And, speaking of curiosity, I wonder which way the water rotates when you flush a toilet on a space station. Oh. Turns out it goes straight down, much like my parents' expectations. Oh look, three seashells. That's a reference to the movie Demolition Man, which is a movie that came out in 1993 and starred Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. One of the only things I remember about that movie is how every restaurant is Taco Bell. I had Taco Bell the other day. I mean, I ordered a steak quesadilla. It was pretty good. Once we're finished doing exciting things, like opening and closing lockers, we can head out to the next room where we find a bunch of trees. We perform a system check on the room's computer and find out that multiple water valves are stuck in the closed position, and if we try to fix them, it doesn't work. I think this is a metaphor for my life. We then go into the lounge where we find a bunch of books set up like dominoes and immediately try to knock them down. Oh, look at that. Turns out I'm better at knocking over books than I am at making my family proud of me. It's about this time we realize this isn't our first day on the station and we might be going a tad crazy. Well, more crazy than we already are. Further evidence can be found on the lounge computer among the messages, including one undelivered message in the form of a very pleasant haiku. Before me you stand, your lifeless bodies waiting, my poor dead angels. This poem speaks to me on a deep level. In another one of these messages, we discover a system command that we can input into the administrative terminal, and upon doing so, we find a hidden message from some individual named Jeff, who claims the space station program we are a part of is being scrapped, and that they are on their way to pick us up, taking away our one and only chance of something in our life being successful. 
Now on to the kitchen, where we perform our mandatory system check and run the system command in the administrative terminal to find yet another hidden message from our main man Jeff that warns us to not leave the main modules unless absolutely necessary and that the station was meant to be used underground and not in space. He also mentions something about the interior screens being too close to the external walls, which may seem a bit weird till you look out the window and notice a stuck pixel on what we originally thought was space. I mean, we are in space, right? Cause I'm not a big fan of the underground. It's where the mole people live. We then dispense ourselves some liquid food and accidentally smash it on the ground and watch it shatter, just like our hopes and dreams, before leaving back to the greenhouse. We start to notice some subtle changes, like books scattered everywhere- oh, Jesus! And little blue sculpture things laying about. We head back to our quarters and are greeted by a smiley face before noticing our room has changed and things have been moved around, suggesting we are having memory lapses. Even her towel is different, but I guess that's just good hygiene. I usually use the same towel for about two weeks before changing it, mainly because I'm lazy and also I don't want to spend $2.25 on a load of laundry every couple of days. It gets pretty expensive. This is pretty much how the rest of the game goes from here on out. We go back through each room, noticing at first subtle, but increasingly drastic changes while typing in the system command to get a better understanding of the story. But true to life, eventually everything breaks and we're powerless to stop it. Once everything has broken beyond interaction, just like my social skills, the game lets us go into the food storage where we find another door that leads us to an emergency exit and the control room. Once inside the control room, we do the one thing we probably shouldn't do, and that's reboot the station which powers everything down, including the lock to the emergency exit, which we promptly take to leave the station, where we find another small room with what appears to be an airlock. I'm not going to go into any more details due to the risk of spoiling the game, because I really did enjoy it and I would encourage other people to play it. However, if my recommendation isn't good enough, here's Artemis from Artemis Gaming to tell us his opinion on the game. Hey Artie, what did you think of Verde Station? I don't know Banjo, I've never played this game, and I'm not reading a script that you've written for me. You know you're not really helpful, right? That's what my mom said, but she still thinks I'm cool. Well, there you go. I give this game a solid sticky note smiley face. Out of five. Verde Station is a rather simple game about exploring one person's ability to cope with isolation, and I think it pulls it off pretty well. It lacks a certain level of interaction, but with the subtle changes and unpredictability awaiting in each room, it does a good job at keeping the player interested and wanting to know more about what's really going on, and with the slightest changes to each playthrough, it offers some replayability. And with it taking me just under an hour to complete, and a price point of $4.99 on Steam, I'd say the game's worth giving it a look. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some business to attend to. Thank you all so much for watching, if you liked it, click that like button, leave a comment down below, and hey, stick around by clicking that subscribe button. I'd also like to thank Artemis from Artemis Gaming for being a part of this monstrosity. Go ahead and go to his channel, give him some love, link is in the description, and I will see you in the next video.